I'm one of those people who knew what they wanted to do when they were very young, you know, when I was nine or ten, the girls across the road, my friends, the Upton girls, we, we used to make up plays and put them on and my sister and brother and I, my, who were younger than I, we used to also present little plays. I remember us doing it under the dining room table, uh, my parents' dining room table, which I have now, and we'd put little puppet plays on under the table and charge the neighbourhood kids, you know, <laughs> however much it was back in the day to come and watch our plays. And then um, uh, when I went to university, I studied uh, human geography, but I kept writing and in 1985, my first play, uh, was, which was called Malachy Dispatches from Another World, was put on um, by a small group called La Troupe, run by Jose Farinas, who was my partner and uh, a Spanish immigrant from Spain itself, who came here and immediately got involved with uh, Aboriginal writers in Sydney. And so I met a lot of people like um, Maureen Watson and her son, worked with uh, Aboriginal actors on our, my first play, uh, a two-piece presentation for three weeks at the um, uh, the old Broadway church in, in uh, Ultimo. And it was uh, Justine Saunders played the part of Malachy, a one-woman play that, that I wrote. Uh, about a woman in a third world situation and her friend Ethel Compton played the part uh, of the presenter in Kafka's uh, Report to an Academy so it was a, a dual bill and Ethel and Justine introduced us to their friends and their community and that changed the course of my life because you know it was the first time I'd really got to know any Aboriginal people and I was in my mid-30s when I first got to really know any Aboriginal people and, and then I got to know people and read about this, their situation and read the works of people like Margaret Tucker, who wrote a book called If Everyone Cared. And uh, then my plays became uh, even more engaged with, with social justice. They were already along that, that line. But then I started writing about uh, Aboriginal people and uh, trying to help Aboriginal people to be heard and to get their human rights back, you know, in, in our country, which is still um, reluctant to embrace the very generous offers that Aboriginal people make to the wider community. However, it's very encouraging to know that 7 million voting age Australians actually did vote yes for the voice to Parliament, and, uh, you know, that gives me hope because it's it's a, a real affirmation and I'm sure we will have a better result next time we try and as the Aboriginal people I know say okay that was the voice knocked back fine next we have truth and treaty so don't stop Aboriginal people never stop fighting for their rights and also they never stop being incredibly generous in offering to share country and culture with non-Aboriginal Australians and the sooner we can all embrace that the better.